In this med mastery lesson, we'll learn about the four different tube feeding infusion schedules. The first and most common feeding schedule for hospital inpatients is continuous, which we learned a little bit about earlier. Continuous tube feeds are infused at a consistent rate over a 24 hour period using a feeding pump. Here are some photos from earlier showing a tube feed being infused with a feeding pump. A continuous schedule is the preferred method for patients who may be at risk of tube feeding intolerance. For example, patients who are critically ill, mechanically ventilated, at risk for refeeding syndrome, or have blood sugar control issues. The continuous infusion allows the body to meet its calorie needs without having to process large volumes of nutrition at once. It also easily allows clinicians to determine tolerance to feeds while they infuse at a low rate. The second tube feeding schedule is cyclic. Cyclic feeds are administered for less than 24 hours per day, most commonly 12 or 16 hours, but you can choose however many hours you need to achieve your goal. They're usually infused through a pump, but can also be given as a drip using gravity. Cyclic tube feeds can be used to meet 100% of your patient's needs. An example is a patient with a peg who has to lie flat at night. Suppose our patient is at risk for aspiration if receiving gastric feeds while lying flat. This patient could receive cyclic tube feeds on a daytime schedule, for example from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., to meet 100% of their needs while they're awake, alert, and sitting up. To calculate a cyclic tube feeding rate, you'll take the daily goal volume needed and divide it by the number of hours your schedule includes. Let's say our daily goal volume is 1440 mLs and we want our schedule to range from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m., so 16 hours. If we divide 1440 mLs by 16, our goal rate is 90 mLs per hour over 16 hours. Cyclic tube feeds can also be used to meet less than 100% of the patient's needs. They're frequently provided on a nocturnal schedule as a supplement for patients whose daytime oral intake does not meet their needs. They're turned off each morning, stimulating the patient's appetite during the day and encouraging them to eat. When calculating these supplemental cyclic feeds, you'll need to choose what percentage of your patient's calorie and protein needs the tube feed should meet. You'll then calculate their goal volume and infusion schedule needed based on those parameters. The third tube feeding schedule is intermittent. The aim is to mimic a typical meal pattern, so a patient receives several doses of tube feeds a day, spread a few hours apart. Intermittent tube feeds are infused with a pump set to deliver a determined volume over about 30 to 60 minutes. An important note on intermittent tube feeds is that they're only suitable for patients with gastric feeding tubes, so those with an NG or OG tube or a gastrostomy tube. This is because the small bowel isn't a large enough reservoir to receive a large quantity of formula. Trying to give a large feed to a patient with postpyloric access will result in abdominal cramps, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and dizziness. Examples of patients suitable for intermittent feeds would be someone in the hospital for oral surgery who can't eat by mouth, or a patient with a stroke who can't feed themselves but has no GI issues. However, they're not recommended for critically ill patients or patients with a high aspiration risk. Intermittent tube feeds are ideal for patients who will need longer-term tube feeding outside of the hospital, since they're more physiological than continuous or cyclic tube feeds. So if you're getting your patient teed up for discharge to home or a skilled nursing facility, it's a good idea to get them transitioned over to intermittent feeds. How do we calculate intermittent feeds? All you need to know is the patient's goal tube feeding volume per day and how many feeds you'd like them to receive. Three to four feeds a day is standard, but patients can receive as many as they need to reach their daily volume. Let's say our patient's goal volume is 1,200 mLs and we want to give them four feeds a day. Just divide 1,200 mLs by four to come up with your goal of 300 mLs four times a day. The last tube feeding schedule is bolus. Just like intermittent tube feeds, bolus feeds deliver a set volume of formula multiple times a day, but the infusion time is even shorter, usually 5 to 15 minutes. These feeds aren't given using a pump, 
They're infused using a syringe or gravity drip method. Bolus tube beads also mimic a normal meal pattern and allow a higher quality of life as they're easy to administer with minimal equipment and can even be provided on the go outside the home. An example of a patient who would be appropriate for bolus tube beads is someone with a developmental delay who's unable to self-feed, whose care provider can quickly provide a tube-feeding bolus at mealtimes. Another example would be a patient with ALS who lives at home and is tube-feeding dependent. Like intermittent feeds, bolus tube feeds are only appropriate for stable patients who have a gastric feeding tube, so either an NG or OG tube, or a gastrostomy tube, and are not recommended for critically ill patients. If your patient will require tube feeds at home and is closer to leaving the hospital, start thinking about whether they should be transitioned to intermittent or bolus feeds before discharge. Lucky for you, bolus tube feeding regimens are calculated the exact same way as intermittent regimens. Lastly, let's talk about weaning tube feeds. Patients on 100% tube feeds who are able to restart an oral diet need to be consistently tolerating over half to two-thirds of their meals before tube feeds are stopped. Some patients may not progress on an oral diet because they're full from the tube feeds. To prevent this, once they're started on a diet, transition them from continuous, intermittent, or bolus feeds to supplemental nocturnal tube feeds to meet less than 100% of their needs. This way, they won't be full during the day, stimulating them to eat. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.